I'm speaking about Molasima, and uh, as we have heard yesterday, people were talking, and even today, that uh, my in introduction to Molasima is connected also with a lot of stuff that was said. For example, we heard about Tuang Guru yesterday, and we also heard about Sheikh Yusuf. And in we discuss history, we sometimes say that Islam is divided into three personalities at this, till this moment of time. That the first one was Sheikh Yusuf that planted that seed, as we accepted that he was the official first person to enter uh, as a Muslim and settle down in uh, South Africa. And then we had Tuang Guru that set up that whole system of having a madrasa and an imam and having that set community. And then the third one was Mawla Sema, uh, known as uh, Qasim Muhammad Sema, that came down and set down that religious uh, institutionalized religious studies from 1973 and still running up to today. So much so, I was reading the other day, there's in New York, there's uh, a madrasa called Daru Ulum, New York. And the uniqueness about that Daru Ulum is, like many other Daru Ulums in the Western world, that the studies is done by uh, English. Which means that Daru Ulums and this form of learning has become accessible to most students in the Western world that was always prevented and in sometimes hindered because of the Urdu language policy. Now why am I mentioning this is because Molasima was the one that, the first one in uh, the world that started this form of Darulum studies, which was uh, very famous in the subcontinent, as Mola Ashikil mentioned, that if you were a Mola, now we knew exactly you only studied in India or Pakistan. Until Molasima started his own Darulum in 1973, and the medium of instruction was in English. And this, because of no other evidence, this has been accepted as the first time that a Darulum was run with the instruction, medium of instruction being English and all the books being in Arabic. And the sacrifice of that, as until that now we find, especially in the UK, plenty of Darulums. And in most parts of the Western world, instruction is via the medium of English, but all the books remain in Arabic. And this was because of Mola Sima, who was born on the 12th of May, 1920 and only passed away on the 9th of June, 2007. So he was about 87 years old. And Molasima was somebody that at a very young age, he had shown this form of ability to have the capability to go and study. That one Molina Mia that came from Johannesburg and was connected to Mia's farm, whose other name was also Waterfall, by the way. If we look at the old Quran, it was a Waterfall and we had Waterfall that instructed him, well, Asima, you have a choice because of me recognizing your abilities that either you go study medicine, which will be a benefit for everybody because you're not just going to become a doctor, you get specialized. Or, even better, you go study Deen. Which means there will also be some extra benefit. And, Alhamdulillah, Mawla Sima took the option of going to study Deen and he studied at that time, there was three madrasas that was very, very famous. One was a very famous Darulum Dioban, the other one was in Lucknow, and the third one was the uh, Madrasa to Dabel, where Molasima studied. And after he completed his studies, as we know that time, you had to travel by boat or steamboat, as they used to say. On their way home, World War II was in progress. And because World War II was in progress, everybody and everything is a target. And the boat got torpedoed by a Japanese sub, the Tilawa. The, the name of their ship was the Tilawa. And most of the people died on that ship except about plus minus 140. And it's also been recorded in some of the newspapers in Natal that when uh, that time of the year comes, they will always have a mention about that uh, uh, incident. Because it made a lot of news. And Molasima had to return back to India, stay there for a year, uh, worked at Masjid, started teaching also, and also done some research. And while he was there, for some of our brothers, Mola Sima was the first and only person that was known that had met Molina Ilias. And who is Molina Ilias? Molina Ilias is the person that initiated this whole program of Tablir Jumat. So Mola Sima was the only South African that had met Molina Ilias. As a matter of fact, Mola Sima met Molina Ilias twice. And Mola Sima who graduated in 1942, after that one year he came back to South Africa. And uh, 
like for some of us, it's nice that you, when you complete, there's a job waiting for you uh, in Washburn. And Molasima took that job and he started uh, teaching and doing imamat work and that. And we mentioned or we heard earlier about Imam Harun. There's two similarities with Molasima and Imam Harun, and they were staying at the opposite, opposite, opposite end of the South, uh, South African uh, landscape, if you get the map. On the same day that Imam Harun was arrested, on the 29th of May, if I'm correct, or the 30th of May, it was corresponding also to 12th of Rabil, oh well. And that same moment, Molasima was also arrested. But Molasima wasn't like kept into, uh, in, uh, in solitary confinement and stuff like that. But he was arrested because this was a planting by the government. And why was Molasima also arrested? Because a little known fact about Molasima, and some, uh, some people also know this, that Molasima and Imam Harun were considered to be the only two alims that used to do a, a, a propagation to the indigenous people of South Africa in their indigenous area. As a matter of fact, you could not go to a black area without permission from the government. And if you were found in a black area, so-called black area, you could go to jail. And as such, Molasima was arrested quite a few times because what was he doing in a black area, so-called Indian man in a so-called black area. And Molasima was uh, at the Masinga Reserve he started there, a masjid and everything, and in that over a period of 10 years, 900 people accepted Islam. And also in Tugela Ferry, Masjid there was also started, and Molasima was the one that was always fighting that that masjid in that township needs to stay open so for today that we find that Islam is everywhere. The other thing about Molasima is that he was the one that devised the first central syllabus for the whole of the Natal province. Molasima was that one who was the first one to translate the Quran into indigenous language into Zulu. And Sheikh Ahmad Dinit, which has heard about whenever something needs to be done in a, especially from an Islamic point of view, always consulted Molasima. And our uh, second deputy president of the MCC is also here, that many a times while we were in class, the phone used to ring, and it was Sheikh Nazim that was always founding Molasima to speak about anything and everything. And in 1973, as we said, the first Darul Ulum opened, and it was initially a third year course. And in 1983, it was the first locally trained complete alims from A to Z that they studied in South Africa, graduated in 1983. Up till that time to now, Alhamdulillah, that process is continuing, that so much so that after the uh, uh, founding of the Darul Ulum Newcastle, we have found that after a certain period of time, Darul started flourishing in South Africa. And just one last fact for some of the students, that they studied at Qasim al Ulum. One of the madrasas that Molasima taught when he was in uh, Washbank, those many, many years ago, that madrasa, madrasa was also called Qasim al Ulum. The first istima was organized by Molasima. The first Tablik Jamaat that went out overseas, was convened and by Molasima and he was part of that. And that legacy is continuing and continuing, so much so that the effects is being felt more in Cape Town, uh, the legacy of Molasima, than what we even say in the possible world. And so much so, it has continued right across the world. And sometimes a great person, through the grace of Allah, his greatness is always comes out after his death. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the, the, the uh, legacy of Molasima grow stronger, and those who always used to say, we are the children, and he used to act like a father to us, the way he used to speak, encourage and scold us, that we can also try to lift up to that legacy that is there, and uh, um, that we can also leave something behind that is positive. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our efforts. Alhamdulillah.